Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this really pretty table runner. Those little pointy things are called prairie points and they're really easy to make. So let's get started. You'll need the following supplies. The size of the table runner that I demonstrated in this video is 17 inches by 47 inches but you can make it any size that you want. For the front, one half yard. For the back, a half a yard. Or you can use the same fabric on the front and back. That way you would only need to buy one yard to cover both areas. Cotton batting. You'll need a size that's approximately 12 and a half inches by 44 inches. Cotton batting can be bought off of the big giant rolls or in small packages. Prairie points. For this size of table runner, you'll need 26 squares that are five and a half inches square. I suggest you either use up your scrap fabrics or buy fat quarters. I'm stacking my fabrics that are for the front and the back. You can use the same fabric on the back as the front if you want. I'm using something different. Make sure that both pieces are folded in half with selvage edges together. P line up your fabric on this line up here and then place your ruler on one of the lines on your cutting mat and you're going to cut this edge straight. I like cutting the fabrics together this way they get cut exactly the same size and then go over 12 and a half inches and do another cut and take your time lining up your fabrics and your ruler and cut Turn your fabric and line this raw edge up on one of the lines on your cutting mat and cut your selvage edges off and this way you've got everything the same size, same length. I chose four different fabrics for my prairie points. You can use as many different fabrics as you like. I cut mine five and a half inches square. If you're not sure how to cut out fabric squares, then click on the link in the upper right hand corner and the video will give you detailed instructions on how to cut out your squares. Take all of your squares and you'll have the back side of the fabric facing up and fold it corner to corner and then press. Bring these two corners together and press. And there you have a prairie point. Arrange the prairie points along the edge. I used 10 on the longest edges, 10 on each side, and 3 at the ends. In the corners, do not overlap. They're just right up against each other. So make sure you do all four corners that way. Then overlap them. Now mine are overlapped on the longer sides, about an inch, but the pieces on the ends are overlapped just a little bit more. I advise you to use at least two pins per prairie point then stitch all around all four sides close to the edge and I would lengthen your stitch to about 3.0. Lay your cotton batting down and then place the fabric for the back of the table runner on top and you're placing the wrong side or back side of the fabric against the cotton batting. Smooth it out all over then cut around all four edges so you get an exact fit for your batting. Bring the top of the table runner 
front side down against the front side of the fabric for the back. Line up all your edges. Then place pins around all four edges. On one side, leave an opening that's large enough for your hand to go through so that you can turn the table runner front side out later. You want to make sure you back stitch on each side of the opening. So you want to start here and you're going to stitch one quarter inch seam allowance. So as you're stitching down to this corner here, you're stitching along, you're going to stop one quarter inch away from this edge, leave your needle down through the fabric, lift up your presser foot, turn your table runner, lower the presser foot, and continue stitching. And do that around all four corners, and again remember to back stitch when you come around here to your last pin. At all four corners, I recommend you trim some of the fabric off because it's going to be very bulky in the corners. So I usually will do just a cut straight across this way and I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch of fabric from the corner and you might even want to take just a little bit off on the sides just to relieve some of that bulk. Again, do this at all four corners. Reach inside the opening and go down to one end and begin pulling it front side out. Then go down to the other end and do the same thing. Press your edges flat and as you're pressing just pull out on the prairie points just a little bit so that you get a nice edge. On the back of the table runner, go to the opening and fold the edges in one quarter inch and pin to close. Then stitch around all four sides close to the edge, all the way again around all four sides. After your table runner is all stitched together, you need to consider if you want to do any kind of a quilting stitch pattern. Quilting means doing some type of top stitching, decorative stitching, all over the top. There's nothing in here right now holding it all together. There's no stitch pattern. So during use or when you're washing it, your fabric could shift and kind of tug and pull in different directions. And it won't look quite the same after it's been washed. So here are some suggested quilting stitch patterns. Doing straight lines, in to in and side to side. And you could go two or three inches apart. Also, if you wanted to go on a diagonal, you would just start from the corner and go down at an angle all the way across. And then you would turn and go from the other direction. So you have this kind of crisscross diamond uh, look. Also, if you have decorative stitches on your machine, this is called a serpentine stitch. Again, it's just actually lines going from end to end and side to side, anywhere from two to three inches apart. And you can still do that on a diagonal pattern. If you have a machine that's got large quilting stitches on it, like mine does. I have a baby lock crescendo. These are some of the big stitches. I wouldn't use this on a table runner. This is for something small. But for a table runner, this would be really, really pretty. In fact, this is the one that I did on it. So when you're going to prepare your table runner for doing quilting stitches, you can use safety pins or straight pins because this table runner is small. You can even do the straight pins because, but be careful not to poke yourself. So you're going to place safety pins all over the top or the straight pins. This is a walking presser foot and you can use these and this will make your quilting stitching 
process a lot easier. This helps to prevent pin tucks in your fabric when you're stitching. It's also referred to sometimes as a dual feed foot. So it helps to keep the layers of your fabrics from shifting apart. I often get asked, do I wash my table runners? And the answer is no, not very often. I spot clean because you put all that work into them. And when you wash, you're gonna lose a little bit of the color. So some people tell me they actually scotch guard their table runner so they don't have to worry about washing. But I don't like to wash mine unless they get really, really dirty. Now, For more table runner projects, play this video until a green screen appears and then click on the links. If you like this video, click on thumbs up and then click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the little bell and enter your email address so you can receive emails about my latest video. If you're not receiving those email notifications, go to your cell phone or iPad and click on settings and turn notifications on. This is Maria, this is Manny, this is Tony. So glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing.